are going to look at what the Bible says about the kingdom of heaven. But before we do that, you need to understand that the Bible speaks of two kingdoms. The Bible speaks about the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven. These are two different kingdoms. And unless Christians see the difference between these two kingdoms, they would not be able to understand what the Bible says on this subject. It's very important for you to see that the Bible speaks of two different kingdoms and the Bible differentiates very clearly between these two kingdoms. The kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven are two different kingdoms. Now in the Gospels, the title of Son of God is given to the Lord Jesus Christ and also the title, the Son of Man. And if you read your Bibles, you will see that the title Son of God is always related to the Kingdom of God and the title Son of Man is always related to the Kingdom of Heaven. The title Son of Man is given to the Lord Jesus Christ and it's always used in relation to Israel and the Kingdom of Heaven and the title Son of God is used in relation to the Kingdom of God <clears throat> and also in relation to the church which is made up of people but it's still a spiritual body of Christ. Now remember the Bible says that the Holy Spirit takes a born again believer and baptizes him into the body of Christ. It's a spiritual body. So the title Son of God is related to the church and to the Kingdom of God whereas the title Son of Man is related to the Kingdom of Heaven and to Israel which is an earthly kingdom. So this is something very important for you to make note of. Now to further show you the difference between the Kingdom of God and the Kingdom of Heaven, look at Romans chapter 14 verse 17. Let me show you this verse. For the Kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. Paul says the Kingdom of God is not meat and drink, which means it is not physical, but it is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Now these three, righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost, these three are spiritual things. They are not physical things. So Paul is very careful to make this distinction uh, between the kingdom of heaven and the kingdom of God and say that the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, it's not physical, but the kingdom of God is righteousness, peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. Look at also what the Lord Jesus Christ said about the kingdom of God in Luke chapter 17 verses 20 and 21. And when he was demanded of the Pharisees when the kingdom of God should come, he answered them and said, The kingdom of God cometh not by observation. Neither shall they say, Lo here or lo there. For behold, the kingdom of God is within you. So Jesus Christ is very, very clear about the kingdom of God. He says, it's not something that you can see with your eyes. It's inside of you. It's within. Righteousness, peace and joy in the Holy Ghost are things that we experience inside of us. So the kingdom of God we understand mainly is a spiritual kingdom. Whereas the kingdom of heaven, I will show you in a moment, is a physical, literal, earthly, and, uh, and uh, a visible kingdom. The kingdom of heaven is a physical kingdom, it's a literal kingdom, it's not a spiritual one, that's what it means. It's an earthly kingdom, not a heavenly kingdom. Though the name of this is the kingdom of heaven, it's not a heavenly kingdom. It is an earthly kingdom. It is a kingdom that's established on the earth. And it's a visible kingdom, whereas uh, the kingdom of God, Jesus said, does not come with observation. You cannot see it. It's inside of you. But this is outside. It's on the earth and you can see it. 
And this is a very, very important distinction that you need to see in the Bible before you can begin to understand this great subject of the kingdom of heaven. Now, if you ask Christians, what is the main theme of the Bible? The general answer you get from Christians is the love of God or salvation of the lost uh, sinners. These are the kind of answers you get if you ask Christians as to what the main theme of the Bible is. Now, they cannot be more mistaken than this to think that the main theme of the Bible is the love of God. No, it is not. The main theme of the Bible is not even salvation. The main theme of the Bible is not even the death and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. How Christians come up with this answer is beyond understanding because you don't need to know Greek and Hebrew to know what the main theme of the Bible is. All you need to know is how to read your Bible in your language. If you can read the Bible, you will be able to see that the main theme of the Bible is not the love of God, it's not salvation, it's not the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. A cursive reading of the entire Bible will show you that the main theme of the Bible is the kingdom of heaven. A literal, visible, physical, earthly kingdom that God plans to establish here on this earth. This is something that Lucifer tried to get for himself the kingdom and the throne which is the center of the kingdom. Look at Isaiah chapter 14 and verse 13. For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven, I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. Look at that. Lucifer before his fall into sin says, I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. Satan's greatest desire is to be the king of this kingdom of heaven, which is the main theme of the Bible. But God promised it to his son, Jesus Christ. Look at Luke chapter 1, verses 31 to 33. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus. He shall be great and shall be called the son of the highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there shall be no end. Now notice this. When the angel came to announce the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ to Mary, he did not tell Mary about what he was going to accomplish at the first coming. But instead of that, the angel announces to Mary that Jesus Christ will possess the throne of his father David. The throne of David, remember, is a physical throne. The throne of David is not a, a throne that is in heaven. The throne of David is an earthly throne. And the angel says, God has promised to his son to, that he would possess the throne of David and uh, that of his kingdom there shall be no end. Why is it that the angel is talking about what Jesus Christ would accomplish at the second coming at the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ? This is to show you that the main theme of the Bible is not the virgin birth of Christ. The main theme of the Bible is not even the death and resurrection of Christ. The main theme of the Bible is the coronation of Jesus Christ as King of Kings and Lord of Lords as he sits on the throne of David and rules an earthly, visible, physical kingdom of heaven. And this is very important uh, for you to see before you can understand a lot of things in the Bible. Look how God will fulfill this promise in Revelation chapter 22, the last chapter of the Bible. and verse 3 it says, and there shall be no more curse, but the throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in it, and his servants shall serve him. The throne of God and the Lamb. You see, the main theme of the Bible is a kingdom, and the center of a kingdom is a throne. And unless you see that the main theme of the Bible is the kingdom of heaven, a literal kingdom, and the throne of this kingdom, you will not be able to understand God's plan for the ages. Uh, if you want to see uh, a coherence in the teaching of the Bible from Genesis to
to Revelation, you need to pick up this thread, this main theme, the kingdom of heaven. And then you will understand so many things which have been very difficult for you to understand before. Then you will see why God did certain things that he did. You will see why God allowed certain things to happen. You will be able to understand the history that God allowed to uh, unfold throughout the ages. And you will see God's plan in that history unfolding. So the main theme of the Bible is, is, is the kingdom of heaven. Now to begin at the very beginning, Lucifer, when God made Lucifer, he made him to be the king of both these kingdoms, the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven. Now this is something again, uh, which is not really understood by Christians. Christians do not understand why God created Lucifer and why Lucifer fell into sin in the first place. The Bible says in Genesis chapter 1 and verse 1, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Now let me illustrate uh, this verse in this manner. This is Genesis 1.1. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And the picture that you get here is of a perfect uh, creation. In verse 2 of Genesis chapter 1, you will read that the earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep. That is a picture of chaos and destruction. Whereas Genesis chapter 1 and verse 1 is a picture of perfection. It was a perfect creation. There was nothing wrong with it. And the Bible says that when God created the heaven and the earth, he, Lucifer was the king of this perfect kingdom that God had created. He was the king of the kingdom of God, which is a spiritual kingdom, as well as the king of the earth. And that would make him the king of the kingdom of heaven. So the devil, as we know him now, was Lucifer in those days. The shining one. And his role or his function was to be God's wise regent and rule the earth as God's wise regent. He was the wise regent of God and was ruler over the earth and over the sons of God, which are the other angels that God had created. Now look at this. You need to see this. Lucifer as the head or the king of the kingdom of God was in charge of the sons of God. Sons of God are angels in the Bible. And as king of the kingdom of heaven, he was in charge over the earth. Lucifer was king of both these kingdoms. And that's very important for you to see. And let me illustrate this in this manner. This red color crown that I'm drawing here would indicate the kingdom of heaven. And this blue color crown would be to indicate the kingdom of God throughout this study. So Lucifer was made king of both these kingdoms when God appointed him to be his wise regent on this earth or this earthly kingdom that God created. Now we know that Lucifer was indeed king and he was above all the other angels which are called the sons of God because even after Lucifer's fall into sin and after uh, the other angels followed him into sin, it's always the devil and his angels. The devil is spoken of as the leader, as the king over all the fallen angels. So we know that even before their fall, he was above them. Not only that, look at uh, Isaiah chapter 14 and verse 13. It says, For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. Notice now it says my throne. So Lucifer had a throne of his own. And he was above the other sons of God. His throne was an earthly throne. He was the king of the kingdom of heaven. And 
he uh, was also the king of the kingdom of God and he was the king of the other angels that God had created. He was a king whom God had appointed to rule over both these kingdoms. So this is what happened. God created a perfect earth, a beautiful earth. Genesis 1.1, in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. And when God created it, he also created uh, Lucifer and the angels to inhabit this kingdom that God had created and made Lucifer the king of the earth and the king of the other angels. Now to say that the subjects of his kingdom were the other angels, uh, let me show you a verse in the Bible. Look at Ezekiel chapter 28 verse 14. Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth, and I have said thee so. Thou wast upon the holy mountain of God, thou hast walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. Satan, firstly, is called an anointed cherub. What was he anointed? The word anointed is the same word that is given to the Lord Jesus Christ, the Messiah. Lucifer was a Messiah. He was an anointed one. What was he anointed for? He was anointed to be king. And he is called a cherub. You see, Lucifer, or the devil as we know him now, is not an ordinary angel like the other angels of God that we read about in the Bible. Lucifer was a cherub. And cherub are very special kind of beings in the scriptures. <clears throat> so the subjects of uh, this anointed cherub's kingdom were the other angels and Lucifer, a cherub, was above the other angels that we read of in the Bible. So this anointed cherub was anointed to rule and he had a throne on the earth and uh, the Bible teaches us that he was a king and his kingdom was the earth and the subjects of his kingdom were the other angels uh, that God had created. But the Bible says that Lucifer rebelled against God. Though God had made a beautiful kingdom for Lucifer to rule, Lucifer was not satisfied with that. And he rebelled against God and he tried to usurp the throne of God himself. Look at what the Bible says in Isaiah chapter 14 verses 12 through 14. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground which didst weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. This was Lucifer's desire. He was not satisfied with the kingdom and the throne that God had given him on the earth. He had his eyes set on the throne of God, which is in the third heaven, on the mount of the congregation that we have just read about. The Bible teaches us that the third heaven is in the shape of a mountain. It's called the mount of the congregation where God's throne is. This is the third heaven. God's throne. Satan wanted to take this throne that belonged to God for himself because he was not satisfied with the kingdom and the throne that God had given him to rule. And now you read in Genesis chapter 1 and verse 2 where it says, And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. So what do you see here in Genesis chapter 1? And verse 2, it says here, And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. So what you see here is a picture of complete chaos and destruction. And if you read the Bible and try to compare scripture with scripture, you will see that this is a picture of judgment. The earth is empty, it is void, it is without form, it is covered with darkness 
and the earth is submerged in a vast body of water. The deep there is a reference to this great body of water. And this is a picture of God's judgment on the earth, which was the kingdom of Lucifer. Because Lucifer rebelled against God and tried to usurp the throne of God, God destroyed his kingdom. Uh, and Lucifer became the devil, that old serpent, the great dragon that we know him as we know him now. The rest of the Bible records God's plan to re-establish his kingdom on earth with a perfect sinless ruler who would be king of both these kingdoms, both the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven. And the rest of the Bible also records the history of Satan's attempts to reclaim the lost kingdom. So what you see in the Bible, throughout the entire Bible, is God's efforts to re-establish his kingdom on the earth and Satan's efforts to reclaim the lost kingdom. This is the main theme of the Bible, the kingdom of heaven. It is rightfully God's kingdom, but Satan tries to take it from God and make it his own because originally that was what God anointed uh, Lucifer to do.